All right, we're at uh, 325, so let's go ahead and me. Okay, so yeah, thanks everybody. I'm uh, Brian Perry. This is uh, after five years, my dream Drupal component workflow is finally here. Um, and it's a short session, so we'll just kind of uh, dive right into it here. But I uh, do want to just briefly, I, I won't give my uh, standard kind of setup here, but I uh, did just want to thank uh, the company I work for, Bounteous. Uh, they've been uh, very supportive of me uh, attending events like this and speaking and participating and spending time on the community. Uh, so check us out. So, um, so I'm going to start with kind of a, a little uh, history lesson, at least from uh, my perspective here. Um, so from uh, Drupal 8's life cycle, um, the two are uh, kind of common for building with components in Drupal. That's kind of interesting. So uh, Drupal 8 on 18th, 2015, which uh, makes me feel old, I guess. Uh, but obviously, big change in how uh, the templating, the uh, theming, going from PHP template to Twig. And then, uh, you know, certainly probably before that time, but even uh, through the release, there was a lot of, uh, you know, people understanding what can be done with Twig and the power of Twig and doing things like including or extending templates, and then later on using embed. Looks like I copied a, a line twice there on the slide. Shame on me. And then, uh, another meaningful mi milestone, at least for me, is uh, DrupalCon New Orleans. Um, it was at least the first I had heard of, uh, that was May 2016, it was at least the first I heard of the uh, Components module, which uh, is a commonly used tool in uh, this type of workflow. But also a, a lot of people who are interested in building with components and using pattern libraries and, and finding ways to improve that process in Drupal um, had a lot to, to share during that particular DrupalCon. Then uh, January 2017 was the uh, release of the UI patterns module. Um, and this was, was kind of mind blowing to me in that a lot of the things that uh, we had done up until that point, mapping uh, Twig data in um, templates, for example, or Drupal's data in Twig templates, could now be done in the Drupal UI. And then November 17, November 2017, uh, was the experimental release of Layout Builder, I believe. Uh, so now we have this exciting new page building experience in Drupal that people are rallying around. Uh, but you know, the question is, how does this affect our component-based workflow? And then the thing that uh, I'm kind of leading towards with this is uh, the Component Blocks module, uh, which was released in July. And this, in an interesting way, kind of bridges the gap between UI patterns and Layout Builder, uh, two things that you know I've used a lot, um, and uh, really kind of solidifies and ties together this workflow from my perspective. Anyway, it might not be uh, you know the magic for yours, but so um, <clears throat> with that timeline in mind, um, we're just going to take a look at an example uh, Twig component in this case from a few different perspectives. So uh, I used uh, the nes.css library to create this cool kind of retro looking, I'll get out of the way, uh, what it calls a container component. And we have our uh, twig template on the left there. And um, you know the specifics of the markup aren't super important here, but we do have you know just a handful of uh, in our for all these different approaches, uh, uh, Drupal data component that lives somewhere else, um, a lot of down to you know going to get the data into those tables. So looking again at the container, um, so uh, platform uh, and year, which are you know tags an image, some body text, stuff like that. So now we'll first look at uh, doing this data mapping in, in code in a Twig template, which was kind of, uh, and, and still is really a common approach to this problem. So 
we have the container component that lives in our component library, which is somewhere other than Drupal's default template directory in this case. Um, and we can see what it looks like in Pattern Lab, for example. And now we uh, need to take data from Drupal and pass it through to that component. So uh, in this particular case, we need to use the components module. And the components module, if you haven't used it before, uh, allows us to create twig namespaces. So it gives us uh, nice little shortcuts to places where our components live. Uh, but also, it's necessary to even get Drupal to recognize templates outside of the default templates directory. So again, thinking about mapping this data in a twig template, um, we have uh, a game content type that has just a, a handful of fields that, in this case, map pretty nicely to the variables in the twig template. And we want to display this container using a, a view mode, the teaser view mode in this case. So uh, in mapping the data, we're using the, the concept that's often referred to as a, a presenter template uh, in Twig. So it's essentially like a traffic cop in the middle where Drupal expects the template to live, a, a default template suggestion, in this case, node game teaser .html .twig. But as you'll see here, we're using twigs include to include the container template that lives in our pattern library. We're using that at components namespace. And then we uh, are listing out and mapping the data in Drupal, you know, the data available to Drupal to the fields in that container template. So we see things like label and then content.field platform, year, and so on. And uh, the end result is we'll get uh, for that view mode, the card uh, or container in this case displayed like we expect it. So then uh, as we talked about uh, the UI patterns module, um, you know, came along and provided a way to handle this mapping in the UI. And that was especially attractive to me because while the idea of doing that mapping in a twig template or, you know, you can also do similar things in pre-process, it definitely gets the job done, but it, it always felt more complicated than it needed to be uh, for me, especially to somebody who's, you know, at the time new to Twig, or you really have to know potentially a lot about Drupal's render arrays and where that data lives, and you need to be careful and not strip out too many things. Um, so the idea of, of doing this mapping in the Drupal UI was always very attractive. So the way I describe the UI patterns module is that it's a way to define and manage components in a way that and uh, patterns are Drupal plugins, and uh, you can UI, like I mentioned, and we'll see a quick example of that. And it closes a optional pattern library page um, in Drupal, kind of like a mini pattern lab type of thing. And so a number of other cool uh, bells and whistles that you can do. You can pre-process patterns, render them automatically. Um, you can create libraries with your patterns, things that we just won't have time to get into today. Um, but uh, if you're interested in learning more, I've uh, certainly given a number of talks on uh, UI patterns even specifically, and there's also great documentation for the module. But again, looking at our container, in this case, we're going to, the thing that we're rendering is a pattern, the container pattern. And uh, the things that we're plugging into are really just the same fields from the template that we've seen already. Oops. And this is a quick look at uh, a pattern.yaml file. So to create a UI pattern, um, by default, you need to create this one of these patterns.yaml files. And we won't go into everything this can do, but um, you know the pattern has an ID of container, a label, a description, and then a lot of the work here is listing out the fields and specifying you know a label. The type is something that's mainly used for UI patterns documentation. Um, and then uh, description and then some preview content. So in some cases, we have just a string we're passing in there, also markup, and uh, there's some other things you can do there too. So by defining that, we then will have access to uh, these patterns in uh, places where, so there are a handful of uh, integration modules that UI pattern ships with. Um, so basically anywhere that you can uh, 
you know, use a, a layout, essentially, um, you could use one of these patterns. The one we'll look at just as a quick example is uh, UI patterns views. So for a row in a, a view, you can specify that you would use a pattern. So here where it has show, we pick pattern, and then under the settings, we have uh, for the row style options, we can pick the particular pattern, the container pattern in this case. And then uh, for each um, you know, piece of data, each field in the view, we can map it to the destination in our pattern. So we can actually just handle that mapping in the UI rather than digging things out of render arrays and code, which is great. Uh, also, just worth noting, uh, potentially in the area of self-promotion here, but I also maintain a module UI Patterns Pattern Lab, um, which uh, the end result is going to be the same thing as what you uh, you know got out of that previous example. Um, but rather than having to manually define uh, the patterns.yaml file that we saw, um, it can automatically discover templates from a pattern library. Um, so you you know there's a lot of overlap potentially in the data that you define for your component versus the fields that you have to specify in that patterns.yaml file. Um, so it can eliminate that redundancy. There are certainly some limitations there. It expects particular conventions. It might not work with uh, all pattern libraries, but um, you know, especially if you want to take, um, you know, think with this concept in mind, um, it can be useful. So then uh, just thinking back to that timeline that we saw before, uh, thinking about layout builder, there comes, you know, the, the question is um, how uh, that component based with layout builder. Again, thinking the same container component uh, and layouts. So now we can think of a layout in Drupal. What a layout consists of is essentially, if we were to represent this as a layout, a of regions, essentially, for all component. And then, um, so a few things to kind of keep in mind. So if we were to use layouts to represent these components, um, first off, you need to make sure that you don't uh, essentially pull out the things that Drupal and Layout Builder depend on for things like its drag and drop functionality. So you need to make sure that you're using uh, attributes and have certain wrapping divs for each of your regions. Otherwise, uh, things will uh, break and get hairy pretty quickly. And then there's also the fact that using Layout Builder is going to require you to use uh, you know, essentially a visual representation of your component when you do the mapping. So um, you know, for example, we have a layout for this container. Um, but you'll see here that while you certainly can use it with Layout Builder, when you start to look at like the, the tags there, um, some of the add block sections tend to overlap. Um, and it really doesn't lend itself to situations where you might have fields that are not even going to be displayed visually, but do um, you know, change the uh, display of the component. And you can you know, do that in uh, like code for a custom block. Um, but you know, it's definitely some extra uh, extra work to do that. So that finally brings us uh, all the way over to component blocks here, um, which I think really ties a lot of these things together. If you do have an interest in, um, you know, being able to control and map data into your components uh, in Drupal's UI, and also do tend to uh, use Layout Builder. Um, it really ties things together. So it's a recent release. They have a stable release, but it, you know, it hasn't been along for all, uh, around for all that long. But it exposes UI patterns to Layout Builder um, and really just kind of streamlines that, that process in general. There are definitely ways that you could have had UI patterns play with Layout Builder, um, but it makes the process a lot easier. And also, it sidesteps some of those visual layout issues that we just saw. So uh, it's going to give you any of the fields available to the entity. So like if we're looking at this game content type, all of the fields on the game content type will be available to put into this.
I think my headset decided to just disconnect. Am I back? All right. Great. Thanks a lot, fancy headset. <laughs> all right. Um, so you can use all those fields that are available to the end, or you can also just pass in fixed data. So let's just take a quick look at what that actually looks like in practice. Thanks, uh, chat, for having my back when the audio went out. Um, OK, so uh, we're still thinking about our container component here. Um, so we have a section, and we want to add a block to it. And then with uh, this module enabled, we have the component block section. So all of the our UI patterns are going to be available there. So we just have this container one. Um, so we can add a container block with fields from content, the game node in this case, or a container with fields from the user entity, which this uh, also has access to. And then once we add our block in the sidebar here, um, we can configure all the mappings just in that sidebar and uh, not visually yet at this point. So essentially, the configuration is more like what you might be familiar with, like the you know general like manage display tab um, at the component level. But then when you get to the layout level, you can still have that visual representation of, of your uh, page. So um, we give it a title. And then for each field, um, you just specify what source goes into that field. So um, title goes into title, unsurprisingly. Uh, for platform, this is just an example of uh, picking a fixed input. Um, so we could just enter in the text that we want for the platform. And then uh, just another kind of example of uh, you know what you can do. Basically, all the configuration options are going to be here. So for an image, we can pick uh, the formatter, the image style that we're going to use, if it's going to be linked or not, um, which is all really great. So it sidesteps those visual issues, uh, but then you will still get the visual representation of your component to place at the overall like layout and page level. So I think that mix uh, works really well, kind of uh, doing the, the field by field at the component level and then still having the visual representation for the overall layout. So pretty much up on time here. Uh, but I, I really, as far as what I have been trying to do with all of these pieces of the puzzle, I've tried a lot of things to do specifically this. Um, and this module component blocks has come along and, and really solved that problem I've been trying to solve, which is great. Um, so, you know, being able to handle the mapping in the UI, uh, it's a really uh, uh, great streamlined way to be able to do that, especially if you're using a layout builder. Um, and then uh, as far as making it easier to package and distribute individual components, like this module doesn't specifically have an impact on that. But UI patterns in general is, uh, is a way that you could, you know, with the YAML file and all the template markup, you could actually just ship and share and reuse components that way. Um, I also am interested, as I mentioned, in, you know, kind of evolving and, and improving the way that Drupal can automatically discover these components. Um, but overall, you know, just looking forward to uh, us as a community continuing to build amazing components and component-based sites using Drupal and uh, keeping the learning going. So, um, you know, this is still new, and I really haven't had a, the complete chance to like fully uh, add this module to my workflow, but I'm really excited about it and uh, looking forward to seeing where it's going to go. So uh, a couple of things as uh, we wrap up at, uh, at two, not my time. Uh, there's a, a bunch of amazing talks uh, going on, um, so much great content. Um, April and Mauricio are people I always love uh, to see speak, uh, along with uh, Sam as well, who might even be uh, in the in the chat and on the session. And if you're interested in this stuff, uh, that talk I, I'd certainly recommend. Uh, the single file components module is definitely another interesting way to be able to create kind of easily packageable and distributable uh, components, and really cool if you're into the you know, view style single file component concept. And uh, there's also a sponsored coffee break coming up. I don't know how, how exactly it's sponsored in my house, but I am definitely going to go have a cup of coffee and enjoy the coffee break. And uh, we're pretty much up on time. I do have some uh, questions. Uh-oh. OK. I was worried that Mark go, but glad he's back. Uh, so some uh, questions. Mark was wondering how I set up the video. Uh, yeah, it's definitely probably like more <laughs> unnecessary uh, technical can't help the bells. 
app called mm, <laughs> the worst name ever, uh, but it, it does like this green screen type effect, cool way to be able to integrate your slot with video and really just spice things up. It's uh, it's pretty early in beta, but it's, it's really fun to mess around with. I'll even try to drop that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks everybody for saving me when the audio went out. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, if there are any other questions in the chat, feel free to drop them in. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm around and uh, look forward to chatting. Thanks everyone and thanks Batcamp. Loom.com, Dave suggests. Cool. And let me, uh, I'll try to drop a, a link to that mm -hmm in the chat here. There's also an album by the band Reliant K, apparently. Oh, yeah, Slack's a good idea, too. So Dave, I'd definitely be interested if you want to, uh, you know, ping me in the the chat or on Slack um, about the challenges you're running into uh, with this type of workflow. I agree that they definitely are there. Um, uh, I'd love to know, yeah, more of what you're struggling with. And uh, and Mark, uh, so you can specify in this app that you have a green screen, but this is actually without any green screen. You can see if I put my hands in, it kind of goes to heck. But uh, it's able to do this without an actual green screen and would be way better with a real green screen, <laughs> which maybe someday. Very cool, Dave. Um, yeah, I, I guess really all I can say is, um, you know, feel free either in the Drupal Slack or on, on Twitter or whatever. Um, you know, as you go along that process, if you have, uh, have questions, uh, be happy to talk. All right, cool. At this point, I've stolen uh, two minutes uh, extended from this 20-minute session, so I'll, I'll drop. But thanks, everybody.